Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Surviving Scientology Radio with your host, Jeffrey Augustine. Today, we have on with us a very special guest, Shastina Sandman. Shastina, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Jeffrey. Shastina, you are running for the United States Congress. Yes, in, in District 48. That's in Southern California. Yes, Orange County. It's where I grew up in Anaheim. You yes, know? yeah, that's that's uh, right outside there, Anaheim. You know where Disneyland is. Do you go to Disneyland often? I, I grew up at Disneyland, literally. So you are in the OC, as we call it here. Yes. Uh, we have an interesting story. Our mutual friend Robbie Olson. Yes. Was Joy Villa's uh, campaign advisor. Yes, or maybe campaign manager, because I think he was kind of taking those duties too. But definitely campaign advisor. Okay, campaign advisor. Now let's go back a little bit. Yeah. I've, I've interviewed Robbie Olson on my podcast show. He gave me the interesting story about Joy Villa. Yes. And so Robbie called me and he said, uh, and I hadn't seen Robbie for a while, and I really wanted to, to, to catch up with him and see how he's doing and just mm -hmm. chat with him and things. So he, he called me about two weeks ago and he said, uh, Jeffrey, why don't you come out to an event in you know Riverside? And it's, uh -huh. it, was, it was the uh, Unite Inland Empire Conservative Conference. Yes. And big guest speaker there, there were many great speakers, but Sebastian Gorka, Dr. Sebastian Gorka was speaking. Yes, he was. So I thought, Fantastic speaker. Well, I thought, you know, I, I see him on television. I'd like to go, I'd like to go hear Dr. Gorka speak. I'd like to go to this event and see what it's all about. And I have Robbie, who, who is so networked, he knows so many people. I thought, well, that would be mm -hmm. fun to go to a Republican event and, and see mm -hmm. Sebastian Gork and kind of feel the energy, you know? Yeah, oh, and the energy is amazing. It, it was amazing. So I went to the event with Robbie and uh, he introduced us mm -hmm. and uh, I got to meet your lovely husband and your children. Yeah, thank and, you. And, yes. talk about them. and we had uh, we had lunch. So it was it was a wonderful time. I also got to meet um, Andre Soriano and his husband and Andre is the designer who designed Joy Villa's Make America Great Again dress. Yes, yes, a beautiful dress. That dress is stunning. Uh, it, was, it was a gorgeous dress, and, and Andre is quite charming. I, I, I love him, isn't he? <laughs> he's a lovely man. He and oh, his yeah. husband, great mm -hmm. people. Yeah. So, so for me, this was a chance to fill in some more information about Scientology and how it's trying to meddle in politics, and this gets into your story. So, mm -hmm. first of all, when did you when did you first meet Joy Villa? So I, when I first got into starting to go to events back in October in 2017, because I was just a social media personality, I never went to any rallies, any events, any any mixers, nothing, because. I'm a mother of two children, and as a family, we discuss that those events are very dangerous. You can see that people, they get physically hurt. Sure. And on both sides of the fence, I'm not blaming anyone, I'm just saying both sides of the fence. So for us, we stuck to just online, YouTube, Periscope, Twitter, Facebook. You can see I have a huge social media presence. It's gigantic. I, I was <laughs> blown away. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had your social media presence. I've been working on it for the better part of a decade, for sure. Amazing. So, and I just, I love talking to people and connecting with people. And that's how it is. I truly love engaging with people. And that's the key. And a lot of people don't get that. They think that they can just post and people will just follow them. Or they can just do, say something and that's amazing and people will follow them. I'm like, no, you have to engage. And I truly love engaging. And it just works. So, Omar Navarro had a fundraising event. Omar Navarro is running for Congress, just like me, but he's running in the 43rd district against Maxine Waters. So he's going up against a powerhouse. And he told me that the, the location was going to be at the Trump Long Beach golf course. And he told me there was going to be uh, extreme security there and Sheriff Joe was going to be there. So this was, this was a pretty big event. So I'm excited. I'm working on the event. I'm going to be there. That's fantastic. I find out that Joy... Villa is going to be there, and her and I have had some friendly tweeting, public tweeting back and forth, maybe a couple DMs, hey, how are you, whatever. No real deep dialogue. Somebody found out that I was going to that event, and they anonymously sent me 
an article letting me know that Joy was a Scientologist. Now, I am familiar with Scientology because I am a fan of what Leah Remini and Mike do on the show. I watch that show, and it's really opened my eyes to educating me on what Scientologists do and how the Sea Org works and everything that goes on within that. I mean, I hate to say cult, but it, it just really doesn't seem like a religion to me. It, it, it is a cult. I mean, I, no argument there. Uh, Shastina, just as an aside, you, you're very prominent in Christian evangelical circles. Absolutely. A, no. a thousand percent. My pastor is Rick Warren, who is the most famous pastor next to Graham. I mean, he's very famous. He's been on with Oprah. He wrote The Purpose Driven Life. Pa Rick Warren is a very big church. And I was on the social media for the Saddleback Church. So my uh, tweets and stuff are very Christian-based. So it's no surprise to anybody that I am 100% a Christian. Well, absolutely. And, and so my, my, my question is, given your perspective within evangelicalism, and of course, Rick Warren, uh, Pastor Warren is very famous, very well respected. Yes. And uh, he performed the inauguration of uh, President Obama. Yes, second, he did. Second term. Yes. So his, his prominence, you know, is without equal, perhaps only second to Franklin Graham, who's considered you know, the, the Pope of evangelicalism, if I can yes. use that term. Now, sure. how is Leah Remini show viewed in evangelical circles? Does it have a wide viewership? I mean, did, absolutely, did, absolutely. So, Everybody who's anybody knows that show and really love and respect the work that she does and is thankful because my heart is true to children. So anytime we have children that are being abused or mistreated, we absolutely want to bring that to the forefront and put a stop to that. And she's doing that. For me, I could never be a Scientologist because I could never give my children up to a to an organization to raise them. Yeah, and, and this is an important part of, of what I want to make a point is Joy Villa has maintained that you can be a Christian and a Scientologist, and this is simply not true. It's not true on both sides. It's not true on the Christian side or the Scientologist side. You are correct. <laughs> they don't they just don't they don't met i mean i can't be a christian and a mormon like they just don't mix no they it's don't just, it uh, clearly states that in the bible uh, well of course it does and um <laughs> it, and it also states it in scientology like uh, to your point now now getting back to you you going to the event in long beach sure and so I find I, I this is where it's really crazy. So anonymously, someone sends me a message letting me know that Joy Villa is a Scientologist. Now, I don't know everything about Scientology. You know, you know, Tom Cruise is a Scientologist, but we ignore it because he's Tom Cruise and he's amazing. John Travolta is like, oh, you know, but Christy Alley, we're like, oh, she's kind of crazy. So I don't know everything about Scientology and I don't claim to. But I knew that she was a Scientologist and this was. Just, just, it was a little bit, I, 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 had, I got a little sickness in my stomach, okay? So I finally get a hold of Omar after trying to get a hold of him for several days. He said, Omar, I'm not trying to start any trouble here, but I don't know if you know, and maybe you do, but I'm just, are you aware that Joy Villa is a Scientologist? And he said, oh yeah, absolutely. It's not a secret. And I go, it's not? And he goes, well, everybody knows. She just uses Scientology like Tony Robbins. It's just some, some self-help stuff. And I said, oh, okay, well, I can totally understand that because there's nothing wrong with getting self-help and maybe they do have classes that are just self-help and that's, that's all she is of it. There's nothing more to it, right? Yeah. So I go to the event and I meet her and we do a photo op because every time you go to these things, it's all about photo ops. You may never even <laughs> see this person again, but it's a photo op. And you go, smile, and then that's it. That's a picture. And, oh, my God, this is me with Joy Villa, and this is me with Sebastian Gorka. This is me with Robbie. This is me at the present. They're just photo ops. But people on the Internet take these pictures very seriously. And oh, yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you said it because they don't understand. These are, these are a, a photo op is to maximize PR value for both people in the, in the photograph. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But, that's all it is. It's it's a tool that we use to say, look who I know, and you don't. 
I mean, well, that's well, really what it is. <laughs> well, exactly. So somebody like me who sees a picture of Shastina Salmon and Joy Villa, I think you're best friends forever. I don't know. And right? it's so funny that you said that because we all know Vinny James. He saw that picture and he alluded on the internet that Joy Villa and I were best friends. He told everybody that. In fact, it was the first time I ever met her. It's a photo op. I don't even have her cell phone number. Like, I could not call her if I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't and, text her. <laughs> and I know, I know Vinny, James, you know, we, we've talked on the phone a few times and his heart is in the right place. Yes, absolutely. I understand. I mean, I think he did it a little bit extreme. And that's something he didn't like about me because I said, look, I think you're just going a little bit hard on this. I think you're being a little bit of a cyber bully. And we get it. We know it. She's a Scientologist. We're very aware of the fact. And he was upset because I wouldn't denounce Scientology. And I was like, there's no reason for me to denounce Scientology. I've never been in Scientology. I don't know anything on Scientology. I'm a Christian, like 100%. You see me with my pastor every Saturday at 4 o'clock. I'm at Saddleback Church. You've yeah. never seen me at a Scientologist convention. As a Christian, you get to live and let live, okay? I practice my, my faith. You practice yours. Yeah. You, you can be a Mormon or Scientologist or Jehovah's Witness or polygamist. I love watching Sister Wives. I, mean, I, I don't judge. If that's what you want to do, that's what you can do. However, if you're harming children or another person, if it's not consent, then I don't agree with that. I, we, we see eye to eye on that point. So you, all you do at this event is you, you have your picture taken with Joy Villa. Yeah, I had my picture taken with Sheriff Joe, who is a wonderful older man. I think he's running for Congress, too, or Senate. I'm not sure. So I took my picture with Joy Villa. I took my picture with Sheriff Joe. Got my picture with Robbie. Oh, I mean, you take all these pictures, right? My picture with Omar. My, so you do these photo ops, right, where everybody gets a picture. And that's the number one thing is the only reason why you really go to these events is you've got to get your pictures. Well, you know you were at Unite and Lion Empire with me. You can see that everybody's there getting a picture. Yeah, because that's the whole point. Because it's what you do with that picture is the perception that you do on the Internet. Yes. And in fact, you know, uh, uh, Travis Allen, who's running for governor of California, he had his mm -hmm. camera crew there. So they, of course. they, I, I, I'm, I'm dressed. I have on a, a, a navy blue double-breasted blazer, a nice. Yeah, you look very nice. Shirt and tie. Thank you. I got. And if yeah. Leah Remini's listening, yes, I did get my hair cut. I looked very nice. Yes, he looked very nice. He looked, he and, looked, you know, just very charming. But Travis looked good. He's ready for action. It's the perception, and that's what people have to be really careful about. It's the same thing. I'm going to cut forward here to. Joy Villa taking a picture with Kellyanne Conway. And when she handed yeah. Kellyanne Conway something, you didn't get the look on Kellyanne Conway's face because that's not when the camera snapped the picture. The camera snapped the picture right as she was grabbed it and hadn't really looked at it yet. You see, it's all about the perception. And that's what people have to be careful about. Now, that image of Joy Villa handing Kellyanne Conway something of Scientology, they can use that. Now, this is where we're going to get into Scientology meddling. And, and, we're, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll leave aside Kellyanne Conway until later because I have the details on that. Now, you meet Joy Villa. So I meet Joy Villa. Very, very, very pleasant. She's very pleasant. A uh, beautiful woman. Uh, she is just, she, the energy that comes out of her. I mean, when you're talking to her, she looks you right in the eyes. All, she just gives you all of her attention. She is a great speaker. She commands attention. Uh, clearly, she's had public speaking classes. I mean, she's just, she's just vibrant. I truly love that about her. And I truly uh, appreciate everything that she does and continues to do as she pushes forward for, you know, women of color. And, the, you know, Joy can be anything. She can be a woman of color. She can be a Native American. She can be a white woman because she's, she's mixed. And she's just, she's just got so much talent. Uh, I don't know about her singing pen, but other than that, she's got a lot of talent. <laughs> her, she does this performance. The performance was a little odd for me. Um, but, you know, art is for everyone to appreciate. And it was some kind of art. Uh, it was, I don't know if it's on the internet, but they did a show about free speech. And it just, I didn't get it. 
Um, she looked beautiful in her outfit. That was oh, it. Oh, is that is that in the costume where where people are attacking her and they kill free yes. speech and yes, horrible video. Uh, I I, I saw didn't the, get it. I'll, I'll put it in the show notes and I'll let the audience decide. I okay. thought it was just, I thought it was just kind of stupid and 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 clueless but you know that's you know i'm perhaps more harsh on on art i don't know um okay yeah i didn't get it so after then that show was over and just you know i never spoke to joy villa again i never saw her again at that event her her and i kept in in conversation via dm on twitter with a very friendly uh open uh, line of communication um i'll ask her how she's doing she'll say i'm doing well uh we've always had that open line of communication now, I saw her cyberbullying, and I felt really bad for her. And I knew some big attacks were coming, and I said, Joy, listen, um, I think you're a really sweet girl, and you may be a Scientologist or not. Your, your religion is not for me to judge. I'm a Christian. Always will be, always have been. Um, but they're coming for you, and there's going to be some images of your past, and they're going to be harmful. Mm-hmm. And those were the dominatrix images that started to come out. Now, as a model, I have images of me in bikinis all over the Internet uh, because I was a bikini model. And so that's not, you know, I was never a dominatrix. So I don't have any images like that coming out. But I've got bikini images, and sometimes they come up, and people throw them. And I'm like, hey, I looked good. But I didn't have a whip, and I wasn't doing some vampire thing. And uh, Yeah, Joy you know, did uh, what she calls bondage and fetish wear. And those, okay, pic- sure. those, yeah, picture, yeah, those pictures did come out on social media. And uh, at, the, at the same time, uh, Robbie Olson told me that uh, Steve Bannon himself was telling Joy Villa that she needed to really downplay Scientology in her presentation. So yeah. she, was, she was being and warned. And she wasn't listening. She wasn't listening. Everyone was telling her to. Like, you can be a Scientologist, but don't put it in the forefront. But she wasn't listening. She was trying to push it to the forefront. And there must have been someone on the other side, and I think that's the Scientology side, who said, no, you've got to put it in the forefront. It's just like with her husband. We, I didn't know anything about her husband. And then all of a sudden, someone must have told her to put her husband in the forefront because then he was included in her biography on her Twitter. Um, he was included in almost every tweet. He was spoken about all the time. But before that, you couldn't find any information about him. And they'd been married for a year or two. Yeah, he. Uh, so Thorsten she, was in the background. You're correct. Yeah. Yeah, but now he's being put in the forefront. So this is all speculation because I don't know who her advisors were. But I did find out that she had a connection with Soros. I let her know that was coming too. I said, look, girl, I just want to let you know. Um, you're not going to get anywhere. You have a connection to George Soros. And she was like, oh, yeah, right. No, I don't. I sent her the documentation. I said, well, you do. And I left it at that. You know, this and, is so interesting because Kaya Jones, uh, uh, you mm-hmm. know, who was in the Pussycat Dolls, mm-hmm. she, did a, she did a video where she told Joy, you have to stop lying about your age, about this, about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so Joy Villa was being warned by the GOP establishment to like, hey, these, these are red flags, Joy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I told her, uh, I told her to stop blocking people. So she stopped blocking people. I said, just engage, just be honest, just be, just be yourself. Don't lie. Just tell them who you are. People will accept you. I'm like, ask for forgiveness. People will forgive you if you just, if don't lie, be truthful, don't block people, don't be afraid of who you are, but they're not going to accept Scientology. It's just, just, it's not going to happen. And I think she started to see that. And I think it was frustrating for her because whether whatever her religion is, you know, she wants to be a Scientologist and people don't accept that. I was going to say for your evangelical Christian listeners, uh, let me give you some background so they understand the Church of Scientology. They may not know. The Church of Scientology runs an intelligence bureau that does spying, dirty tricks, hires private investigators, harasses, intimidates people. They're the ones that make the hate videos on Leah Remini, Mike Rinder, my wife, Karen Della sure. Carrier, so many others, right? Yeah, sure. This Office of Special Affairs, which should not be funded with tax-exempt dollars. My, my whole thing, Shastina, is the IRS okay. needs to revoke Scientology's 501c3 tax exemption because that tax exemption is for people mm-hmm. of faith and not con artists like the Church of Scientology. 
Okay. Now, things are going on behind the scenes that you did not know about. No, and, and I had no is, idea. This is where the story gets interesting. You, <laughs> you, you have a rally and you're approached by a man who hands you something. Can you tell our listeners about this? So I uh, go to, it's a Republican, oh God, it's a new, it's some kind of Republican assembly, right? Where they're going to endorse candidates for the districts. I've RSVP'd, so you know I'm going to be there. And I show up uh, by myself because it's at nine in the morning. And I show up and I get there and I listen and I'm well overdressed. <laughs> I'm dressed for like a red carpet affair and this is people are like just waking up in the morning. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening and then I do my speech and then um, I sit down and I'm just having a sip of water and a man approaches me. And he says, hi, I'm Clay. I'm with Citizens Commission on Human Rights. I have the package in my office. And he hands me this package. And what it is, is it's a folder. And it's beautiful. And I open it up. And the presentation, I just was like, wow. And I said, thank you so much. Let me, you know, I'm going to finish listening to the speakers. But I'll check this out. And I'll give you a, a call. And he gives me his card. And he goes, yeah, sure. I'm like, okay, and here's my card. You know, okay, great. Thank you. So as I'm sitting there, I'm thumbing through this presentation, and, I mean, it's dynamite. It's got to be a half an inch thick, maybe three-fourths an inch thick of information. Now, if you go to my website, you'll see that I am an absolute advocate against psychiatric drugs and pharmaceutical companies. That is truly what warms my heart. I want to ban pharmaceutical ads on TV. Uh, I don't want to be drugging our children. I don't think we should be giving psychiatric drugs out as much as we do. We have the opiate crisis where 44 people are overdosing on uh, prescription drugs. So I'm a huge advocate for this. So this is something that you know. And I especially love children. And I have just a, a, a lion of a heart to take care of children and protect children. So I hand this and then finally I get home and I start reading it. And it's fantastic information. It talks about mass shootings and psychiatric drugs, which we we know that every time there's a mass shooting, when we look at the mass shooter, we know that they were either on or withdrawing from psych psychiatric drugs. This is fantastic. This information is incredible, right? I go live on my show, um, and I start talking to my listeners, which I can get about five to 10,000 of my listeners. I start telling them, and I go, you guys, look at this. I show them the presentation. I show them the information. I start reading them the information. I spent an hour on it, giving them the website where to go to, to check out this company, uh, where to read the information. I, actually, I think they emailed me a new information too. I have to look at my email. But So then I call the gentleman, Clay, no, no, his, say, his, his, this is this is Clay Bach. Yeah, I know right. him as Clay. Yeah, okay. right. Because I don't know who Clay Bach is. I never, I didn't even Google the company because the presentation looked so amazing, and I had no idea who they were until the end of this conversation with Clay. So I call up Clay, and I'm driving to. I'm driving to LA. I had to go do something. I'm driving to LA, so I call him. I get some free time, and we we're playing phone tag back and forth all day. So I finally get him on the phone. I'm going to LA. We, then I call him again. We chat. Hey Clay, uh, I just want to say, wait, this is fantastic information. I'm so excited about this stuff. It's so exciting to have an organization that that wants to be a part of my campaign that really believes in what I'm doing. How can we connect? How can how can we join forces, right? This is what I'm telling him. I'm so excited. And he's like, Shasta, you know, we are so excited. What we do, the, the amazing things that we do, blah, 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 blah. You know, we're talking about that stuff. And I say, can you tell me about legislation that CCHR has done? Can you tell me about the legislation? And specifically, what legislation are you working on right now? What legislation are you looking to do in the future? So that we can partner up so that I can get you guys, we can join forces for my campaign. Because I'm running for Congress in the 48th District and this is one of the key things I'm working on in my campaign. So Clay says to me, he goes, listen, uh, you are asking amazing questions. I cannot answer those questions for you. You will need to come to L.A. 
and spend the day with us and the team here can answer all of your questions for you. They'll show you around uh, the center and we can just show you everything, ask all your questions, get you the information that you need and it's just a really great place to be. And I said, wow, LA, that's really far. I don't like going to LA, just so you know. <laughs> it, it's a whole day trip and I hate it. But I'm thinking, you know, it's really good for the campaign. They should go. And then I say, all right, let's, let's, let me ask you this, Clay. It's like, on the next question. Clay, this looks really expensive. And this has got to be a fortune, what you guys do. And, and the reason why I'm asking Clay this stuff is because I'm thinking, well, if we could join forces, not only could we join forces for legislation, but maybe they could make a donation to my campaign. Yeah, it because seems natural. It yeah. seems a natural thought process because as a campaign, as a candidate, we're always fundraising. So I start pressing the question, okay, Clay, who pays for this stuff? He goes, oh, well, we give donors. Right. Now, I'm a candidate and I fundraise. There's no way in hell you just get donors to pay for this. So I'm like, okay, so what kind of donors? He's like, oh, donors like you and me. Now I know he's full of it. Now he's being evasive. Because middle class Americans do not have this type of money. You've got to see this presentation. This is not middle class American money. This is huge donor money. Because I know what it costs to print stuff like this. Again, I'm a candidate running for Congress. I know what this stuff costs. I said, boy, Clay, you know, you must be raising a lot of money from all of middle class America in the United States because <laughs> that's not, it's not computing. This is a lot of money, Clay. He goes, well, the founders are Scientologists. Mm. Literally. I'm on the phone. I'm driving on the free, and I go, holy, you know what I said in my head. Oh, yeah. I go, what, Clay? Well, the founders are Scientologists because, you know, Scientology is really, really out there advocating against psychiatric drugs. I'm scrambling in my head. How do I get off this phone conversation? Like, how do I get off this? Now, I want to tell you something. Scientology, I have seen Leah Remini's show. I have seen Mike Render speak. I know what Scientology can do. I know the bullying that they do online. I know the intimidation that they do. I stay away because I know who these people are. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. So I'm sitting here, I'm like, I gotta get off this phone. I gotta get off this phone call. I cannot believe this right now. How did this happen? Why am I on the phone with a Scientologist? Like, what is going? Wait a minute. I thought my 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 brain is like scrambling, and I'm getting like, oh my god, why did you give me this packet? You know, I'm just like all this thing. I said, okay, Clay. Well, that's really great. Um, that's fantastic. Let me look at my schedule. And I will try and schedule something so I can come up to L.A. And he goes, okay, that'd be fantastic. And let me send you the new PDF version because we have an updated uh, version. Now I'm going to go ahead and send that to you. And I said, yeah, fantastic, because I told him I wanted to put it on my website, which I have not done. I said, yeah, get me that updated uh, PDF. You know, I want to get that out to the people. And um, I'll look at my schedule and I'll get back to you next week. He goes, absolutely, Shastina. It was a pleasure talking to you. I'm like, oh, it was a pleasure too, Clay. It's really great speaking to you. So I'm like, okay, I hang up the phone. And I literally just sat in oh, silence go ahead, go ahead. as I'm driving on the freeway. And I didn't tell anyone. Oh, I didn't even tell my husband. I told not. nobody. Who, the, you were the first person I told when I saw you with Robbie Olson. Justin, let, let me connect a few dots for you. Yeah. When Joy Villa met you, as a Scientologist, she will write a report on you and send it to the Office of Special Affairs. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Does she write a report on everybody she meets? It's very likely everyone who could be of use to the Church of Scientology, she will write a report on them. Okay, fact, so, okay. Yeah, she'll okay. write a report. Now, what they did, what they typically do, they'll design a program to get next to you. So they read your website and they said you're opposed to the psychiatric drugging of children. Sure. You know, you know who isn't opposed to children <laughs> being right. being psychiatrically drugged? It's, it's, too, it's too much, right? Of course. And, and so they, what they did is they said, they picked Clay Bach. That's the fellow, Clay Bach. He mm -hmm. was the he was the president of the Orange County Chapter of Citizens Commission on Human Rights. 
That is a Scientology front group designed to mislead well-meaning people like you. It's designed to mislead uh, everyday people who have concerns about psychiatric drugging. Mm -hmm. They also have an anti-drug front group that's designed to mislead police departments. And what they do is they, Scientology has a, a, a very expensive digital printing factory in the city of Commerce called Bridge Publications. Oh, it's, I mean, this, it, and, have you uh, seen this packet? I have seen their package. It's all with the CD and all the graph. Oh, it looks so good. Peep, they do good Shasta, work. They do great work. Shasta, people mail me this stuff. Okay. Okay. So you see and, it, so you know. Okay. Well, their magazines are all glossy, and you know, I, 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 being being in, in corporate life as long as I have, subtle things like paperweight. When someone hands you a document and it's yes. on glossy, heavy paper. Yeah. There's a tactile impression that this person handing me this package has money or the yes. company has money and they yes. care that's yes. why like when you that's why, like when you go to timeshare presentations or any kind of come on <laughs> things yes you know anytime i get something that's on very heavy paperweight i know i'm either dealing with a, a con artist or someone who has a lot of money well con artists didn't come to my mind it just i met I, it was two things legit organization who has financial backing who really cares about the people? Because you're not going to spend money in that if you don't care, right? No, not at all. You're no. not, I mean, this is millions of dollars. Because this, the, he handed this to me like he had boxes of them in his trunk. Oh, like he, he's, and he, he's he likely giving does. Out to, I mean, he likely does. That's a lot of money. He sure. could have just simply given me a business card and said, you know, I'd like to send you some stuff on psychiatric drugs. Can I get your, can I email you something? Yeah, sure, email me something. He was ready to go. Like, I loved your speech. I love what you had to say. I want you to check this out. I think you're going to find this very useful. Like he yeah. had a speech prepared when he handed it to me. Like he was ready for action. Well, he had been briefed on who you were, what you stood for, and they're going to, you know, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. That's why they have high quality literature. Absolutely. That's why Scientology it knows. Such yeah. an amazing, it made a huge first impression. So much that. I talked about it for an hour on my show. And that's what they wanted you to do. This is what the Scientology calls safe pointing. So they won't tell you who they are initially, okay? So Clay Bach has been in Scientology for 40 years. 40 he, years? Yeah, yes. Wow. He ran, okay, that the reason, here's a couple reasons why they picked Clay Bach, in my opinion. Okay. okay. Clay Bach ran for uh, City Council Garden Grove in uh, 2016, okay? Mm -hmm. So he's he knows local politics. So he's he a Scientologist an, running for public office. Yeah, he, he ran in 2016. Okay. And he's been in the church for 40 years. Okay. And an, an interesting aside, uh, a, a woman named Pauline Lombard, who was in the in the Orange County um, Scientology org with Clay Bach, mm -hmm. they were volunteers for the church's notorious Office of Special Affairs. And in 2008, they set about to spy on, intimidate, and harass uh, a very good friend of mine who, who was a fellow Scientology critic named Francois. Okay. And they showed up at his house, oh, at the community where he lived, yeah. held signs that said he was a terrorist, distributed leaflets saying he was a terrorist. Oh, my God. Was, Gee, this is what they do. This is why when I was on the phone with them, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm on the phone with the Scientologist. I have to get off this phone. I... I I was like literally every emotion through my head, you know, anger, frustration, fear, like all of them. Like, well, yeah, I, because sudden, suddenly you realize you have a multi-billion dollar cult and you're right in their sights. Yes. And they're, they're, now you're what's called in Scientology an opinion leader. If they mm -hmm. can get to you, now you've got like 7 million Im impressions, impressions uh -huh. mm -hmm. in social media. If they can get to you, they can reach out to all those, to your audience. Right. And, exactly. And, they can make, and then they can drive traffic to CCHR. And, and that part... really makes me angry because, <laughs> one, I worked very hard for my impressions. Two, I am a Christian and I spread the word of Jesus Christ. I do not spread the word of on, on whatever Hubbard his name is. Like, I'm getting so angry I can barely speak right now. Yeah, L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah. <laughs> I do not. Uh, no. I spread the word of Jesus Christ. I lead with love. That's always been my platform. That will always be my platform. So it's it's so rude to even think that they could do that to me. I, I mean, it really took advantage. And I really don't like it. 
No, but it's part of how Scientology operate. It's 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 detestable, but it's how they operate. They target opinion right because leaders. if they would have told me I, they were a Scientologist from the get go, I'd have been like not interested. Yeah, conversation over. Yeah, and so so get this about Clay Bach. So Clay Bach, uh, you know, he was part of a, a, a psycho terrorist operation against my friend Francois, so and they were trying to get him fired from his job. They were telling his neighbors he was a terrorist. They were distributing leaflets saying he this was is, a terrorist. That's illegal, by the way. That's illegal, first of all. And second of all, if you're a church, why do you have an, a, a special affairs office? Well, exactly. What kind Rick of church Warren, has a... Yeah. Rick Warren is a the f very famous pastor. We don't have a special affairs office <laughs> to defend no. Rick Warren. <laughs> no, you guys don't. And uh, if, we, and he gets death threats. He's surrounded by six to seven bodyguards at all times. The man, people impersonate him all the time online. People say awful things about him. We don't have a special affairs for Saddleback Church. And this is an international church. Yeah, you, because you don't need one because you you have, you deal with it in appropriate, appropriate legal manners. Okay? Right, right. Here's what happened to Clay Bach in 2016. Okay, mm -hmm. He's running for Garden Grove. And he's positioning himself as, you know, this, uh, you know, o older man, older businessman who has sensible values, you know, the usual stuff. And at a 2016 uh, meeting in Garden Grove, pub publicly filmed, it was like a, a city council meeting, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, whatever their governing body was at the time. Mm -hmm. um, Pauline Lombard goes during the public presentation and she says, I was a member of Scientology's Office of Special Affairs. I worked with Clay Bach oh, uh, yeah. on fair game to destroy this man. Clay Bach was in the audience. Oh, okay? my God. So Pauline Lombard, I, I, Tony Ortega covered this on his very famous blog, The Underground Bunker. Yeah. For evangelical listeners, if you want all things Scientology, you, you go to Tony Ortega, yes. Underground Bunker. Yes. And, and he you know I, I do a lot of guest columns for him and one of the things i did was on scientology's front groups which i'll post in the show notes okay so clay bach has a chance to respond and he just he stammers he just stammers like what do you do when you've just been exposed as a scientology spy he tries to downplay like i didn't know i was going to come here today and have my religion attacked i'm sorry that's, clay, you're, that's what joy says that's, That's what Joyce says all the time. Don't attack my religion. And I tried to say, I said, people aren't attacking your religion. They're upset because you didn't tell them. That's well, why they're upset. They're not upset. They're not attacking your religion. They're upset because they think that you conned them. You lied to them. And that's why I kept telling her, just be truthful. Tom Cruise is a Scientologist. John Travolta is a Scientologist. Right. Like, we know that they're Scientologists. Yeah, and this is part of Scientology's deflection or evasion is you're attacking my religion. You're a bigot. Well, so they need to, yeah, say, but they need to work on that part because I, I think they would do much better if they just took that out of there. Well, they can't, <laughs> because, they can't because Elrond Humber's doctrine of fair game is called attack the attacker. Oh. So if they view you as attacking them, they won't. Uh -huh. See, see, in Christianity, you have a, a apologetics, which is to make a reasoned philosophical defense of the faith. Uh -huh. That is, you can say why you're a Christian philosophically culturally uh -huh. you know you you might quote francis schaefer's work for example okay uh you might point to the the good works the saddleback church does sure so now scientology has no apologetics what they have is retaliation and revenge okay so and that's this is why from it, hubbard it, it comes directly now, from L L isn't hubbard. he supposed to come back to life well, he Scientology holds to the doctrine of reincarnation, where you know you're a, you're a thetan, uh, that is a spirit, and you're born. Yes, he's supposed to. He okay. said he would. Re, he said he would reincarnate 21 years later after he died in 1986. Okay, so so well, so far he hasn't shown up. But so who is he supposed to be reincarnated as? Well, he said he okay. would reincarnate as a political leader. Actually, oh, he said he would get come out. back as a No, it's there. And That's, are you serious as a political I'm, leader yes i'm serious he said because in order to do what i need to do i need to be a political leader now now there's a guy online right now which is you know we're following this guy's claiming to be the reincarnation of l ron hubbard you know, we're, we're just watching this okay it's on social media hubbard, you know, someone you know, could if they were really good and knew all of his work and everything they could yeah but the problem the, the problem is 
church leader David Miscavige. He's never going to buy it. Even if he no, really he, did reincarnate, he'd probably kill him. <laughs> because oh, he, uh, that guy you know, is yeah. completely in control. Yeah, if L. Ron Hubbard showed up and said, hey, uh, David Miscavige, turn over the car keys to Scientology back to me. Never happened. Uh, well, he would lock him up with his wife, Shelly. Oh, I believe you know, it. I believe you know, it. I've he, seen he, Leah's he, show. We know. We yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, we know Shelly's missing. And uh, I've always been wondering, where is she? If you go to TonyOrtega.org, that's Tony Ortega's mm-hmm. website, it's, it's widely maintained that she is at Scientology's secret base up in Twin Peaks, which is up in the mountains of Southern California. They have Scientology has a lot of different organizations. One of them is called the Church of Spiritual Technology, or CST. And that's the group that builds these underground bunkers that are nuclear proof, and they store L. Ron Hubbard's works on stainless steel records and titanium safes so that if Jesus. there were a thermonuclear disaster, people would be able to go and get Scientology technology from out of the you know doomsday vaults. Wow. And she has to know what's really funny. Scientology says it's the only, you know, the world's only path to salvation. Yeah. It's the only way to be saved. Now, at the lower levels, they'll say it's just self-help, right? Yeah. Now, now they're talking out of both sides of their mouth because they're saying that we're going to clear the planet. But on the other hand, they have these doomsday vaults. So that if all, and what's, what's sure. even, yeah. what's even nutty. Fit. Yeah. No, what's even nuttier is they told the IRS when they were applying for their tax exemption, mm-hmm. that the biggest risk to their vaults was that people would, uh, vandals and looters would take, you know, all the all the stainless steel records and the titanium and melt mm-hmm. them down to make actually useful things. You know, because really, after a thermonuclear sure, holocaust, sure. you're not going to want Scientology. You're going to melt down all that metal to have nice fork spoons, <laughs> hemp pegs, spears, you know, things. <laughs> Sign me up. Now I know where the goods okay. are. That's really so, what I'm going to need. Okay, so Joy Villa likely, she likely wrote wrote you up. What did she then, write about oh, me? Like, if she was to she, write me up, what's she going to say? Like, I'm a nice person? I would hope. No, no she's going to say, she's going to say, here's how we capture and influence her and bring her onto our side of things to safe point Scientology. We want Shastana Salmon to only say nice things about Scientology. So her buttons are psychiatric drugging of children. So we'll bring in Clay Bach, who knows local politics, who lives in Orange County. We'll give her CCHR. We won't tell them what CCHR is or does. And they got you to talk about them favorably on your show. Right. They, they so got why, did Clay, why did Clay slip and say Scientology to me on the phone? Well, if you keep pressing him, well, first, if you look at Clay Bach uh, after Pauline Lombard outed him as a Scientology spy at the Garden which, City. Which, meeting. by the way, I had no idea who Clay Bach was until you told me. Remember? Because you called me on the yep. phone. I was like, yeah, some guy named Clay. Um, and then I had to go yep. look at my paper. And I said, oh, yeah, Clay Bach. And you said Clay Bach. I'm like, yeah. And, and I knew who he was. because I, I didn't know who he was. Tony covered it. And, well, that's the fun thing about comparing comparing notes, right? Right. And... Um, and so they, they vectored him in to get to come what's to control you, to get you to safe point them and promote their front groups. OK, mm-hmm. here's another thing that they do. They, they have a, a, an anti-drug program and they have all this literature on why different drugs, you know, everything from marijuana, to LSD, sure. ecstasy are dangerous. Yeah. And so for a lot of um, police departments that are underfunded and overworked. Mm-hmm. They're tasked by the city council to to do drug, you know, anti drug education, right? Okay. And so Scientologists will go in saying, "We're with, you know, this anti drug this anti drug group, and here's all this free literature." Mm-hmm. And the police go, "Wow, I can check a box off my to do list. I right. can hand out this literature, right?" Right. I mean, it's great and, literature. It really LA, is. Well, that's how Scientology has infiltrated the Los Angeles Police Department. That's one of the ways they've done it. Sure. And, yeah. and and the LAPD actually hands out Scientology anti-drug literature. And they don't even now, realize it. Now, this is, uh, this is a, a violation because LAPD is showing a denominational preference for one church. Oh, and they don't even realize and, it. No, they realize it. I brought it to their attention. This is a constitutional issue. Oh. We're not going too far afield sure. of our interview. Sure. My view is that LAPD has been so infiltrated by Scientology that they're in bed with Scientology. 
In fact, when Leah Remini filed her re missing persons report for Shelley, Shelley Miscavige, mm -hmm. the detective that handled it, Andre Dawson, who's now retired, mm -hmm. had spoke at Scientology events. And what LAPD did, instead of doing an adult welfare check on Shelley Miscavige, yeah. they, met the min the mi they met the minimum requirement of a missing persons report. Right, right. Is Shelley missing? No, she's not missing. Case closed. Wow. Do you think she's and, okay? I mean, do you think she's in good health or they treat her well? or? I, I don't know. And I have no way of knowing because the church is so secretive and they're not going to say she's doing well. They're not going to say, you know, for all I know, she could be in very bad shape. We don't know. When's the, the last time think. someone's seen her? Uh, Physically well, seen she, her? She, she went to her father's funeral uh, and I don't remember the year. Well, she'd have to go to that. If she didn't show and, up to that, that would be a problem. But, but, well, she had attendance and, you know, uh, uh, Scientology guards, basically. And then it was believed she was seen in town up there in San Mar up in the mountains in San Bernardino. So, Which so isn't nobody, far from me. No, and, and so nobody really knows. This is there was a reported sighting. I think I saw that in the news. Yeah. Well, the, the, well, the point store is... The or something, but that doesn't make any sense. Uh, no, it doesn't, but but it, what in Scientology does make sense. That's very true. Than, so basically what they did is they, Scientology got someone close to you. Mm -hmm. They misled you. Yeah. They got you to promote their work. Thinking they, <laughs> yeah. They point themselves. I want you to tell the story. Mm -hmm. We're there this past weekend, uh, yeah. April 8, 2018. We're there. We're standing with Robbie Olson. Mm -hmm. It's you and I. And uh, your your husband was, and your kids were there, and we're right next to Sebastian Gorka. Yes. Okay. Now you can tell what the you can tell our listeners what happened because this is phenomenal. It was like wow, I got to be there. Yes. Robbie Olson mentions to Dr. Sebastian Gorka the name of Joy Villa. What did Dr. Gorka do? Uh, he he literally like threw his arms up and was like, don't ever mention her again to me. I don't want to hear her name. Don't breathe her to me. He, I want nothing to do with her. I will never give her another second of my time. I will never give the dress a second of my time. Because here's what people don't know is that the Make America Great Again dress and Andre were at the event. But Sebastian Gorka didn't want anything to do with it. And I no, can understand no. why because it brings up Joy Villa because she wore the dress. And so I literally was watching Sebastian tell Robbie to basically, you know, get out of here, in other words. And I was like, should we leave? Should we go? Well, um, I came all this way. I really want to see Sebastian. We talk often. I want him to put, you know, a fate, you know, all of this stuff. Sure. And I'm just like, and he literally, I mean, if I was like, I'm giving Bobby these death stares, like, get away from him because you are really upsetting him. <laughs> yeah, and, and he, he actually said, Sebastian Gorka said of Joy Villa, she has already done enough to damage the party. Yeah, yeah. And that was a conversation I had with Robbie the day before about the Make America Great Again dress because I knew it was coming. Well, they asked, I knew it was coming. I knew a model was going to wear it. And then he called me and he said, would you wear it? And I said, yeah, I'm in. And then I called him a couple hours later and he said, I can't. And the dress is, I think the dress is tainted. And, and you know, what it stood for and what it stands for now is just, it's just really sad. And, and then they had a model wear it and she was stunning. This beautiful, just the dress is so gorgeous. And, you know, I wish we would have got a picture of that dress next to Sebastian Gorka because it is about, the MAGA movement and Joy Villa with her Scientology brought on some disappointment and some cyberbullying and some ugly sides on, on everything. I mean, I didn't like any of it and I tried to give Joy and I still do. I give her good w words of advice that I think will help her, but she is a Scientologist. I am a Christian. We just, our religions don't mix. If you want to be a Scientologist, you're going to be a Scientologist. But I will never be a Scientologist. I will never come to the Celebrity Center. So don't invite me. You know, I just won't. It's just not for me. I'm not going to come there. I'm not going to. And they invited me there. 
Yeah, and it, it, this whole episode shows what can happen to you when you're running for public office. The tri- people that try to get to you, who may mislead you, the you know the and the here's what who happens. Want to use you? Yeah. And here's what happens. This is where election meddling comes to play because it's all about favors. Now, if I would have gone down uh, up to LA, gone to their center, saw their beautiful site, everything is gorgeous. Maybe still not known they were Scientologists received a contribution because they could have given me $5,400, the maximum contribution for both elections, June and November, they could have given me $5,400. I could have been on my merry little way, right? And put all their stuff on my website and continue to push CCHR, still not knowing that they're a front for Scientology. And then all of a sudden I could, one of two things could have happened. One, I could have ruined my chances as a congresswoman because they're Scientologists and I'm an idiot and I didn't know that. Two, they could call me up once I get an office and say, hey, you know, it's Clay over here at CC and HR or whoever else I meet. We need you to do X, Y, Z for us. Okay, yeah, sure. No harm in that, right? Yeah. But then they start they start pulling in the favors, right? Because they've donated to you. They're giving you material, whatever you want to do. And you think that you're pushing psychiatric Front. Then what happens is you start to see that little bit of brainwashing. Well, we need you to vouch for us at the IRS. Right. Why exactly. do you need to vouch for you at the IRS? Oh, okay. Well, you guys are against psychiatric drugs. I'll go ahead and vouch for you. Not really, really. See, this is how election meddling starts to happen. And that's where we start to get in trouble and we start to see how they're pulling their weight. And they don't have to convert me, but they can be. They could fund my campaign with the contribution and materials, et cetera, et cetera, and then start to pull favors down the road. And then no, and this is how Congress works. I've always said that Congress can be bought and sold because it's very expensive to run a campaign. This is how they buy their things. This is how special interests meddle in elections. And this is how Scientologists meddle in um, elections because they have a lot of money and what a campaign need. They need a lot of money. So you have to look around and wonder, how do all of these ca- these candidates get money? And here's another thing. There's no receipts. I These candidates, when you look at their FEC filings, there's no receipts. They can put whatever they want on there. Hmm. It could truly be, uh, you know, Scientology could be writing, for instance, Omar Navarro. Let's say he's into Scientology. And I think we'll have to talk about that on the next show. But he's raised almost $200,000. Let's break it down and look at it. And that could come from Scientologists being told to donate to his campaign. Absolutely. And, and, and now, a couple things to end on to just get our audience uh, you know, eager for the next podcast. You, you told me that Joy Villa told you that Omar Navarro had spent three days at Scientology Celebrity Center. Omar told me that. Oh, Omar did. Okay. Yeah, Omar told me that he spent three days at the Scientology Celebrity Center with Joy. Well, this gets very interesting. Now, I don't know who's allowed to go there or be there or stay there. Um, I don't know how it works, how you get through the front door. Celebrity Center is the old Chateaulet Castle here in LA, it's a, it, w- it was built for movie stars to stand when they were oh. filming in, er- in early Hollywood. The Celebrity Center, the way you get there mm-hmm. is to be invited by someone high up in Scientology. Oh. And the whole thing is to overwhelm you by making, if you think their CCHR literature is beautiful, wait till you see the Celebrity Center. I'm looking, I'm going to Google it right now and, because. And, and the whole idea is to uh. wine you and dine you. Now, no less a personage than. Louis Farrakhan, leader of the Nation of Islam. Uh huh. Oh, this looks gorgeous. He, Look at these lights. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's impeccably restored using Scientology slave labor and 501c3 tax dollars. The story of how it was acquired and rehabilitated, renovated, mm-hmm. was on the back of New York slave labor and Scientologist donations. Now, the building is so central to Scientology and celebrity. It's sort of if they're going to try to seduce celebrities, and a celebrity can be an athlete, an actor. Look, sure. Tom Tom Cruise made a big move to get Vic, uh, uh, David and Victoria Beckham into Scientology. He did full court press, and the Celebrity Center was part of it. They're in Scientology. No, no. Tom oh. Cruise tried to recruit. But they, but they wouldn't do it. 
No, they, of course not. Okay. And, but I'm just saying that, yeah. that when Scientology wants to love bomb you and launch a charm campaign and make you feel like you are the VIP of the world, yeah. they use the Celebrity Center. They can quietly bring in Tom Cruise, John Travolta, sure. Kirstie Alley, and Ann Archer. You go down the list of celebrities who can meet you privately there and say, see, Scientology isn't this monstrous thing you think it is. Look at this beautiful thing. Look how tranquil it is. Look what we're doing to help with you know, psychiatric drugging, literacy, blah, blah, and they go down their litany, right? Now, can anyone so, go here or you have to be invited? Like they don't have a restaurant you could go eat at or? Well, well, they have a, they have a restaurant the public can go in to eat at. Okay. But it's, it's sort of like one of those things, like if you know what Scientology, like you said, once you know what Scientology, you're inclined not to go there. Right. Unless there have been a few people in town who just went there to see what it's like and they sure. supposedly offer tours. Now, I live, uh, I can walk to the Celebrity Center, you know, in literally five minutes from my house. Okay. Now, when I go there, they know who I am. So okay. I get I get the security people on the bicycles glaring at me. Oh. And sometimes when, when people come into town, they want to walk around it sure. like a, a, re- a reporter or something. Yeah. So, so I see all the hidden surveillance cameras. We get the security guards. I've seen their guard dog there, you know, yeah. and it's sort of like uh, now, however, when Louis Farrakhan goes there, he's treated like a VIP and he probably gets the, you know, the penthouse. Oh, I'm and sure it's beautiful. So, so, so if you're a critic of Scientology, when you go there, you're going to see nothing but their security. Okay. Right. If, if someone like you, who they wanted to love bomb and seduce, and to, you know, exploit for their own ends, Mm -hmm. you would be brought into, you know, a private dining room, get to meet some celebrities. Oh, shoot, maybe I should have gone for some photo ops. You you, you could have, you you, you know, you you could have, yeah. Why not? John Travolta, Tom Cruise, hey! You know, actually, at at your level as a congressional candidate, they would bring in those assets. Get Uh, out! They would. They would. Look, 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 you're, 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 you're a candidate for United States Congress. Yeah. They could use you to safe point and validate Citizens Commission on Human Rights this rapidly. Mm-hmm. Look, Scientology believes, and we'll end on this because this is just, just too interesting not to end on. Scientology believes that the origins of psychiatry are traceable to a planet called Farsec. And that Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Traceable to a planet? Yes, traceable to a planet called Farsec. L. Ron Hubbard, in a secret bulletin, wrote that psychiatry are, are the actual race of psychs, is what he called them. So you never call psychiatrists uh, psychiatrists, you call them psychs. In Scientology, they're psychs. And they came from a planet called Farsec, F A R S E C. And they came here to Earth and you know other places, and their goal is to implant people through pain drugs, hypnosis. So they're opposed to electroshock, drugging, you know, and they think that the picture of psychiatrists that Scientologists paint are that they drug their patients, rape them, mutilate their brains, and that, and they have a whole thing about psychiatry was behind the Nazis, was behind the Holocaust. Shastin, what you got was the tip of the iceberg of Scientology crazy. My mouth is just dropping right now. I had no idea I, about plant. I mean, oh, oh yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get into it. I literally, I, I, I'm speechless. When you said planet, I was like, excuse me, planet. Well, this is what. Well, th- this is why Scientology has a word called gradient. They gradiently pull you in little by little because if you got the whole package about space lord Zeno, you know, uh, you know the whole story. I've about heard. Zeno. Yeah, I've heard. I've okay. heard. Yeah, remember when Leah Remini was like, "This is it. Yep. This now, if is you, it." If you got all that up front, you would say, no, thanks. I'm getting the hell out of here, right? Right, of course, because you just said planet. I'm like, what? But conversely, look at, look at, if, if, I, if I were to go to your church, what I would get is I would get fellowship. I would be welcomed. Yes. If I didn't have a Bible, you would give me a copy of the Bible. Right. And we would leave and, it at that because we don't want to overwhelm you because it's a lot of stuff. No, but the point is I get I get the Bible from, from Genesis to Revelation. I get to read the whole thing yeah. up front before deciding, right? Right, right, yeah. I don't, I don't have to do low-level auditing and pay five hundred thousand dollars to go up to OT eight. No, and that's that is, another thing I want to know about. How do these people pay for this? 
This is well, that, so expensive. That, <laughs> I could never afford to be a Scientologist, even if I wanted to. Well, usually uh, there's many people who've gone bankrupt who have gone into heavy go debt. Bankrupt. Like I can't even like I can't even play pay for class three. I mean, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> there's not even no. room on my credit cards. Like I'm not sure. I'm paying for a campaign here. How can I pay for your classes? Like what are you thinking? You should have like pulled a credit report on me. It's not going to happen. I don't know what to tell you. I'm broke. I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> okay. Scientology. Sorry. Well, if you if you tell them up front that you have no money, then suddenly they're not interested in you. Well, okay. How, I'm telling them right now. I am poor, white, middle class. I have nothing. Okay. In fact, I'm low but class. How, <laughs> but you're running. But, but you're running for Congress, and you have a big social media following. So they're very. So that offsets. Oh, you know, okay. And We're and crap. and any. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been so fascinating talking to you Shastina yeah. and we I look forward to part two because we'll go further oh further. it's gone further they've even reached out to my husband <laughs> oh they have yes oh so since we've last talked yes to your husband, yes oh my gosh I'm freaking out <laughs> well, well let's let's do another podcast yeah. and I'll take I'll take your your listeners mm -hmm. further down the Scientology rabbit hole where we'll talk about Scientology and the nation of Islam yeah, we will talk about uh, their real secret views of psychiatry. And I also want to tell you Scientology's secret teaching about Jesus Christ, what L. Ron Hubbard really said about Jesus Christ. Um, because I, think, I, I think know it's so important. I know what he said about Jesus Christ. And that's where you cannot be a Christian and a Scientologist at the same time. Well, it gets worse than you even it think. It probably is worse than I even think. It, it, it probably it is worse. And let's make that part two. Okay. Yeah. It's important to educate uh, people on what Scientology really is and what it really does as mm -hmm. opposed to what it's saying it's doing. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Best wishes to you in your campaign for the U.S. Congress. It's just yes. amazing that, 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 uh, that everyday people you know, can run for Congress. Yes. And we'll also do some more catching up on Joy Villa because a question I'll leave hanging uh, is she going to run for Congress in 2018 or is she a no-show? I have the answer. Oh, well, then why don't we end it with that? What is it? Is she a real candidate in 2018 or not? No, she's not. Then why is she saying that she's a potential candidate? She is saying that she wanted to run, but she cannot run because she's just too busy with other projects, etc. So she's looking to run in 2020. How could you run for Congress and have something be more important than running for Congress? <laughs> it's a singing pen. She's selling singing pens and that's for $19 on Amazon and that's more important than running for Congress? I really don't know. I have no idea what's more important. I didn't ask, I didn't ask like in detail because her and I don't have detailed conversations. We just sure. have uh, well, acquaintance conversations, you know, but... Uh, after this podcast, I have a feeling she will disconnect from you and you will have no further conversations with her. And that's so sad. <laughs> I mean, that's so sad. I mean, she's like I said, she's a really nice person. I'm a really nice person. Um, and I don't know, as, as Christians, we don't seek out people and bring them to our religion. We just don't do that. Well, well then, Shastana, why don't we just see what happens when this podcast goes out? And see how Joy Villa responds to it if she does it all or if she declares you a suppressive person and never talks to you again. I am going to say that, well, I, I mean, I just, I. Let's just wait and see we'll what happens. See. We'll wait and see. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we'll look for that in part two. Yeah. What is your website address that people can go to and read about who you are and what you're up to? www.shastinasandman.com. So it's my first and last name, ShastinaSandman.com. Okay, and that's S H A S T I N A S A N D M A N. Okay, and we I, thank you for being on the show. This has really been fascinating. I look forward to part two. Yes. So, for Surviving Scientology Radio, this has been your host Jeffrey Augustine. Thank you so much for listening, and as always, we'll be in very good touch. <laughs>